Today is the 31st of October 2019. Welcome to Walking the Way. My name is Ray. I want to say thank you to everyone for listening in as we continue to explore what it means to have a regular rhythm of worship together. If you're joining us for the very first time, let me say welcome and thank you. Today's episode is a mixture of prayer, scripture and music. It's a really simple pattern. It's really easy to pick up. And we always start each episode with our opening prayer. So let's pray, shall we? Like Elijah, O God, we turn and face you in the midst of the storm. Help us this hour to hear you speak to us. Not in the wind or the thunder, nor even the upheaval of the ground around us. Help us to hear you speak to us, in our heart of hearts as that still small voice amidst the maelstrom, which gives us direction and peace and hope. We ask this in Jesus' name today. Amen. We're going to have our first piece of music just to give us some time to center our thoughts on God. And then we're going to get into our Bible readings for today. And in today's Bible readings, we continue with the book of Jeremiah. And we begin with Peter's second letter. But we'll see you on the other side. Let's ask God to speak to us this morning through the scriptures. Father, your word is everlasting. It goes from age to age and has served as a plumb line and a ruler as a setter of standards for millennia. Father, help us to see that your word is not something that binds, but something that helps guide us and sets us free. Open our hearts and our minds, Lord. Open our ears to what you would hear us say here today. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Bible readings this week are taken from the contemporary English version and begin with Jeremiah 18. The Lord told me, Go to the pottery shop, and when you get there, I will tell you what to say to the people. I went there and saw the potter making clay pots on his pottery wheel. And whenever the clay would not take the shape that he wanted, he would change his mind and form it into some other shape. Then the Lord told me to say, People of Israel, I, the Lord, have power over you, just as a potter has power over clay. If I threaten to uproot and shatter an evil nation, and that nation turns from its evil, I will change my mind. If I promise to make a nation strong, but its people start disobeying me and doing evil, 
then I will change my mind and not help them at all. So listen to me, people of Judah and Jerusalem. I have decided to strike you with disaster, and I won't change my mind until you stop sinning and start living right. But I know that you won't listen. You may as well answer, We don't care what you say. We've made plans to sin, and we're going to be stubborn and do what we want. So I, the Lord, command you to ask the nations, and find out if they have ever heard of such a horrible sin as what you have done. The snow on Lebanon's mountains never melts away, and the streams there never dry up. But you, my people, have turned from me to burn incense to worthless idols. You have left the ancient road, and follow an unknown path where you stumble over idols. Your land will be ruined, and every passerby will look at it with horror and make insulting remarks. When your enemies attack, I will scatter you like dust, blown by an eastern wind. Then, on that day of disaster, I will turn my back on you. Some of the people will say, Let's get rid of Jeremiah. We will always have priests to teach us God's laws, as well as wise people to give us advice, and prophets to speak God's messages. So instead of listening to Jeremiah any longer, let's accuse him of a crime. Please, Lord, answer my prayer. Make my enemies stop accusing me of evil. I tried to help them, but they are paying me back by digging a pit to trap me. I even begged you not to punish them. But now I am asking you to let their children starve or be killed in war. Let women lose their husbands and sons to disease and violence. These people have dug pits and set traps for me, Lord. Make them scream in fear when you send enemy troops to attack their homes. You know their plan to kill me. So don't get angry and punish them. Don't ever forgive their terrible crimes. The Lord said, Jeremiah, go to the pottery shop and buy a clay jar. Then take along some of the city officials and leading priests and go to Hinnom Valley just outside Potsherd Gate. Tell the people I have said, I am the Lord God All-Powerful, the God of Israel. And you kings of Judah and you people of Jerusalem had better pay attention. I am going to bring so much trouble on this valley that everyone who hears about it will be shocked. The people of Judah stopped worshipping me and made this valley into a place of worship for Baal and other gods that have never helped them or their ancestors or their kings. And they have committed murder here burning their young innocent children as sacrifices to Baal. I had never even thought of telling you to do that. So watch out. Some day this place will no longer be called Topheth or Hinnom Valley. It will be called Slaughter Valley. You people of Judah and Jerusalem may have big plans. But here in this valley I'll ruin those plans. I'll let your enemies kill you. And I'll tell the birds and wild animals to eat your dead bodies. I will turn Jerusalem into a pile of rubble, and every passerby will be shocked and horrified and will make insulting remarks. And while your enemies are trying to break through your city walls to kill you, the food supply will run out. You will become so hungry that you will eat the flesh of your friends and even of your own children. Jeremiah, as soon as you have said this, smash the pot while the people are watching. Then tell them that I also said, I am the Lord All-Powerful, and I warn you that I will shatter Judah and Jerusalem just like this jar that is broken beyond repair. You will bury your dead here in Topheth, but so many of you will die that there won't be enough room. I will make Jerusalem as unclean as Topheth by filling the city with your dead bodies. I will do this because you and your kings have gone up onto the roofs of your houses and burned incense to the stars in the sky as though they were gods and you have given sacrifices of wine to foreign gods. I went to Topheth, where I told the people what the Lord had said. Then I went to the temple courtyard and shouted to the people, Listen, everyone! Some time ago the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, warned you that he would bring disaster on Jerusalem and all nearby villages. But you were stubborn and refused to listen. Now the Lord is going to bring the disaster he promised. Pasha son of Immer, was a priest and a chief of temple security. He heard what I had said and so he hit me. Then he had me arrested and put in chains at the Benjamin Gate in the Lord's temple. 
The next day, when passion let me go free, I told him what the Lord had said. No longer will I call you Pasha. Instead, I will call you afraid of everything. You will be afraid and you will bring fear to your friends as well. You will see enemies kill them in battle. Then I will have the king of Babylonia take everyone in Judah prisoner, killing some and dragging the rest away to Babylonia. He will clean out the royal treasury and take everything of value from Jerusalem. Pasha, you are guilty of telling lies and claiming they were messages from me. That's why I will have the Babylonians take you, your family, and your friends as prisoners to Babylonia, where you will all die and be buried. You tricked me, Lord, and I was really fooled. You are stronger than I am, and you have defeated me. People never stop sneering or insulting me. You have let me announce only death and destruction. Your message has brought me nothing but insults and trouble. Sometimes I tell myself not to think about you, Lord, or even mention your name. But your message burns in my bones, and I cannot keep silent. I heard the crowds whisper, Everyone is afraid. Now's our chance to accuse Jeremiah. All of my so-called friends are just waiting for me to make a mistake. They say, Maybe Jeremiah can be tricked. Then we can overpower him and get even at last. But you, Lord, are a mighty soldier, standing at my side. These troublemakers will fall down and fail, terribly embarrassed, forever ashamed. Lord All-Powerful, you test those who do right, and you know every heart and mind. I have told you my complaints, so let me watch you take revenge on my enemies. I will sing praises to you, Lord. You rescue the oppressed from the wicked. Put a curse on the day I was born. Don't bless my mother. Put a curse on the man who told my father, Good news, you have a son. May that man be like the towns you destroyed without pity. Let them hear shouts of alarm in the morning and battle cries at noon. He deserves to die for not killing me before I was born. Then my mother's body would have been my grave. Why did I have to be born? Was it just to suffer and die in shame? 2 Peter 1 From Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to everyone who shares with us in the privilege of believing that our God and Saviour Jesus Christ will do what is just and fair. I pray that God will be kind to you and will let you live in perfect peace. May you keep learning more and more about God and our Lord Jesus. We have everything we need to live a life that pleases God. It was all given to us by God's own power when we learned that He had invited us to share in His wonderful goodness. God made great and marvellous promises so that His nature would become part of us. Then we could escape our evil desires and the corrupt influences of this world. Do your best to improve your faith. You can do this by adding goodness, understanding, self-control, patience, devotion to God, concern for others and love. If you keep growing in this way, it will show that what you know about our Lord Jesus Christ has made your lives useful and meaningful. But if you don't grow, you are like someone who is nearsighted or blind and you have forgotten that your past sins have forgiven. My friends, you must do all you can to show that God has really chosen and selected you. If you keep on doing this, you won't stumble and fall then our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ will give you a glorious welcome into his kingdom that will last forever. You are holding firmly to the truth that you were given, but I am still going to remind you of these things. In fact, I think I should keep on reminding you until I leave this body. And our Lord Jesus Christ has already told me that I will soon leave it behind. That's why I am doing my best to make sure that each of you remembers all of this after I am gone. When we told you about the power and the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. We were not telling clever stories that someone had made up, but with our own eyes we saw His true greatness. God, our great and wonderful Father, truly honoured Him by saying, This is my own dear Son, and I am pleased with Him. We were there with Jesus on the holy mountain and heard this voice speak from heaven. All of this makes us even more certain that what the prophet said is true. So you should pay attention to their message, 
as you would to a lamp shining in the dark place. You must keep on paying attention until daylight comes and the morning star rises in your hearts. But you need to realize that no one alone can understand any of the prophecies in the scriptures. The prophets did not think these up on their own, but they were guided by the Spirit of God. Psalm 76 A psalm and a song for the music leader used stringed instruments. You, our God, are famous in Judah and honored in Israel. Your home is on Mount Zion in the city of peace. There you destroyed fiery arrows, shields, swords, and all the other weapons. You are more glorious than the eternal mountains. Brave warriors were robbed of what they had taken, and now they lie dead, unable to lift an arm. God of Jacob, when you roar, enemy chariots and horses drop dead in their tracks. Our God, you are fearsome, and no one can oppose you when you are angry. From heaven you announced your decisions as judge, and all who lived on this earth were terrified and silent when you took over as judge, ready to rescue everyone in need. Even the most angry people will praise you when you are furious. Everyone, make your promises to the Lord your God and do what you promise. The Lord is fearsome, and all of his servants should bring his gifts. God destroys the courage of rulers and kings and makes cowards out of them. We're going to have our second piece of music just to give us some time to center our thoughts on those bits of scripture that have caught our attention. And after music, we'll say our prayers for the day. Before we say our prayers for the day, just a reminder that if you'd like us to pray with you, then drop us a line through the usual channels, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, email, all the links are in the contact details. So if you click the link, they'll take you to wherever you need to go. We would love to pray with you. So drop us a message. 
I also today personally would just like people to pray for those people who are offering sort of opposite to Halloween parties. So there are churches doing parties of light, Christians across the world doing parties of light. If we can pray for them. Um, I I personally have an issue with Halloween and death and ghouls and all the rest, but I appreciate not everybody keeps my same view. But if we can remember those who are offering a counterpoint to the narrative. Let's pray, shall we? God of all creation, open our hearts and our eyes so that we might see the face of our adversary and recognize, as you do, that they are our sister, our brother. God of justice, you call us to live in truth. Give us the strength to admit our past transgressions and to build new partnerships with old enemies. God of peace, you call us to love our enemies. Give us the wisdom to translate that love into a choice for dialogue over demonization, diplomacy over military confrontation. God of nonviolence, lead us on your path to peace that we might walk humbly with you. We ask this in the name of the one whose peace we seek, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. We say together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us now and forevermore. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.